and this would be a great pitcher's duel between Dennis Martinez of Montreal and Mike Morgan of Los Angeles. Here in the top of the first inning, Dennis Martinez strikes out Darryl Strawberry. Martinez went nine innings in this game, allowing only four hits, no runs, and striking out seven batters. In the bottom of the second inning, this is Mike Morgan striking out Dave Martinez. Morgan went eight innings, allowing only two hits, one run, and striking out five. Morgan would only give up one hit until the bottom of the ninth inning, but the second hit he would give up would be the killing blow. Here in the bottom of the ninth inning, DeLine on the Shields hits the first pitch of the inning over the center field wall, his second home run of the year, giving the Montreal Expos a dramatic 1-0 victory over the Los Angeles Dodgers. We'll take another look at this winning home run by DeLine on the Shields. Here's the nice swing and the winning cut to beat the Dodgers. The Montreal Expos win 1-0. Dennis Martinez is the winner. He's 3-2. He pitches his 19th career shutout. The losing pitcher, Mike Morgan, is 2-2 two two despite allowing only two hits. First inning, Ruben Sierra will connect for a home run. This is a two-run shot with Rafael Palmero on base. The second home run of the year for Sierra, and that made the score 2-0 Rangers. They made the score three to nothing on a sacrifice fly in the bottom of the third inning. And then in the top of the fourth inning, Toronto will get two of the runs back as Mark Witten hits a double deep to center field. That will score Alomar and Olrude, making the score three to two, Texas. Witten gets hung up between second and third, but they get two back, so it was three to two after four. In the top of the sixth inning, Witten came up with his third and fourth RBIs of the game. This time he singles through the right side. And this will bring in Gruber and Carter to score, making it 4-3, to three, giving the Blue Jays a one-run lead. It was still 4-3 to three in the bottom of the sixth inning when Juan Gonzalez will fist a single out into center field. This scores Julio Franco and ties the game up at four. That's how things stood in the bottom of the seventh inning when Ruben Sierra came up, and he had his second home run of the game. This is a three-run shot that goes out to the right field. Houston and Palmaro come in to score. That makes the score 7-4, to four, Texas. Sarah's third home run of the season. He had five RBIs in the game as the Rangers won it 8-5. to five. My son is at the Met game at Chase Stadium on Tuesday evening as the New York Mets host the San Diego Padres. No score in the bottom of the second inning. Derek Lowell quits the start of San Diego against Rick Cerrone, who doubles on this play. Gerald Kalk hurts himself and has to leave the game in left field. Howard Johnson scores 1-0 to nothing, New York. Bottom of the fourth, one to nothing New York, when Howard Johnson is at the plate. And this time, he doesn't only score the run because he's driven in, but because he drives himself in with a home run to left field. It skies over the bullpen for a two to nothing New York lead on the solo blast. The Mets make it three to nothing because Dwight Gooden, the starter for New York, hits. Bloop single to right field. Rick Cerrone scores from second base. Three nothing Mets through four. In the top of the fifth inning, Benito Santiago at the plate. He delivers a long fly ball to right center field that's out of here for a two-run home run, his second homer of the year. After Hojo's fourth homer of the year, that makes it a 3-2 San Diego trailing through four and a half innings. In the bottom of the fifth, Kevin McReynolds' single scores Dave Magadan, make it 4-2 New York. Hubie Brooks is tagged out between second and third to end the inning, but the Mets lead it 4-2 through five. In the bottom of the sixth, the fog starts rolling in with the Mets leading 4-2. Benito Santiago can't handle the West Gardner pitch. It goes as a pass ball. Rick Cerrone moves up, and this prompts Doug Harvey, the umpire crew chief, to ask Tony Gwynn if he can see in right field. He says no, and the umpires confer, and this fog has set in because we're in a fog delay as the umpires decide to take the players off the field. The two teams waited around for an hour and 38 minutes just as if it was rain, and then they decided that the fog did lift enough to play again. Fungos were hit to the outfield to check it out, and although it wasn't the best of conditions, they did decide to resume. They resumed, they lasted about an inning, and the Mets took a 6-2 to two lead when the fog started rolling in again. Then with the conditions at 6-3, to three, San Diego behind the Mets in the seventh inning, it was considered to be so poor that play was stopped again. Mike Aldretti in left field is totally obliterated. They waited 47 minutes. No clearing. It's an official final game. The Mets win it 6-3. to three. Doug Harvey calls it. Final thoughts. What the fog is going on here? And I hope my son made it home okay. The Houston Astros are in town to face the Chicago Cubs. No score in the first inning. 
Sean Dunstan will score on this sack fly as Carl Rhodes makes a nice catch on the George Bell fly ball. It's a one to nothing lead for Chicago. And Andre Dawson follows in the bottom of the first with an RBI double, two to nothing Chicago, as Ryan Sandberg scores off camera. It's two to nothing Chicago in the top of the second inning when Mike Bilecki is pitching to Carl Rhodes. Rhodes delivers a solo home run, his first homer of the season. It's now two to one Chicago leads in the second. In the third inning of play, George Bell delivers with another RBI against starter Mark Portugal. This time it's a double, and on this play, Mark Gray scores 3-1 Chicago. Hector Villanueva follows with a three-run home run, a line drive, his first home of the year. This makes it 6-1 Chicago through three. In the top of the fourth inning, it's Luis Gonzalez at the plate. He triples to make it 6-2 Chicago as Jeff Bagwell scores. A sack fly makes it 6-3 Chicago in the fourth now in the middle innings. Now in the late innings, it's 8-3 to three Chicago leading Gary Scott at the plate against Darren Kyle. And Scott hits his first Major League home run. The Soul Blast makes it 9-3 to three Chicago. And that would be one short of the final score. Chicago would end up winning it 10-3. to three. Mike Bilecki 4-1. Mark Portugal 2-1. Frightening, isn't it? Ozzie Smith receives his 11th Gold Glove Award before the game as the St. Louis Cardinals host the Atlanta Braves in Tuesday night action. We pick it up in the top of the second inning. Mike Heath of Atlanta grounds a single up the middle, scoring Sid Bream and Terry Pendleton. That made the score 2-0 Atlanta. The Braves picked up one more run in the top of the second inning and led 3-0 after two innings. But in the bottom of the fourth inning, with the score 3-1, Bernard Gilkey lines a single to center field. Ron Gann can catch the ball. Ozzie Smith scores from third base, and the score was 3 to two Atlanta. Then in the bottom of the sixth inning, Pedro Guerrero grounds a single up the middle, scoring Ozzie Smith from second base. RBI number 13 for Guerrero, and the score was tied three to three. Moving now to the bottom of the seventh inning, Milt Thompson will get the game-winning hit. Here he grounds a single up the middle, scoring Todd Zeal and Craig Wilson. This made the score five to three St. Louis. Thompson will then get caught in a rundown between first and second base. He'll get tagged out by former teammate Terry Pendleton. Here Pendleton makes the tag, then flips over Thompson, but St. Louis takes the lead 5-3. to three. And 5-3 to three would be the final score as we move to the top of the ninth inning. This is Lee Smith striking out Jerry Willard for the final out. Smith picks up his eighth save of the year. The St. Louis Cardinals defeat the Atlanta Braves 5-3. to three. Austin Red Sox are looking for some runs in their game against the Minnesota Twins. In the top of the second, and they get their first two runs of the game as Tom Bernanski aligns a single to left field. That scores Clark and Burks, making the score 2 to nothing Red Sox. That gave Bernanski 11 RBIs for the season. Then in the top of the third inning, Mike Greenwell hit his third home run of the season, a two-run shot to right field. That brought Reed into score. That gives him eight RBIs and makes the score 4 to nothing Red Sox. The Twins got three of those runs back in the bottom of the third inning. Scott Lass hit his first home run of the season and his second major league home run, a two-run shot that scored Larkin, making the score 4-2 to two Boston. And still in the bottom of the third inning, Chuck Knobloch will line a double to left center field. Dan Gladden comes in to score, and this will cut the lead down to one. That makes it 4-3 to three Red Sox. For Knobloch, that's nine RBIs for the season. So it was 4-3 to three Boston after three innings of play. It remained that way until the bottom of the seventh inning. At that time, Dan Gladden came up, and he hits a double to left center field. That will score Scott Lass and Greg Gagne, and that gives Minnesota a 5-4 lead. But Boston wasted no time in coming back to retake the lead. Carlos Quintana hit his first home run of the season, a three-run shot to left center field. That scored Mike Greenwell and Ellis Burks in the top of the eighth to make the score 7-5 Boston, and that turned out to be the final score. The winner, Gray, is 1-1. One one. The loser, Bedrosian, is 2-1. Reardon gets his eighth save.